Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. The United Nations has the power to punish Putin. This is how it can be done. Ukraine urgently needs help. And if the organization can't act effectively now, the global consequences could be catastrophic. President Volodymyr Zelensky's address to the UN Security Council came at a crucial moment for the United Nations as well as Ukraine. Russia's illegal war of aggression, and the collective failure of the other 192 member states to stop it, represents the biggest crisis for the UN since Iraq in 2003. This visceral threat to the organization's authority, practical, legal and moral, is one from which it may not recover. The principles enshrined in the 1945 UN Founding Charter, primarily aimed at upholding peace between sovereign states, have been torn up by the Kremlin. Repeated pleas by the UN Secretary-General, Antonio Guterres, for an immediate end to hostilities are ignored and the humanitarian laws of war are being brutally disregarded, as the multiple crimes committed in Bucha, Mariupol and across Ukraine show. The union did not happen by accident. Nor should its aspirations and responsibilities now be considered optional or somehow secondary. Following the collapse of the League of Nations, it emerged from the smoking ruins of the second global conflict of the 20th century. The shared, urgent motivation was simple, never again. Seventy-seven years later, governments and nations badly need reminding of its central message. Amid febrile talk that the invasion of Ukraine could spark a third world war, the UN Charter has renewed relevance. Its preamble states, we the peoples of the United Nations, determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind, and to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights, undertake to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors, and to unite our strengths to maintain international peace and security. Unsurprisingly, Vladimir Putin's regime has trashed the obligations entered into by its Soviet predecessors. Dismayingly, China, like Russia, one of five veto-wielding permanent Security Council members, the others are the US, the UK and France, is also failing to abide by the Charter, while other leading states, such as India, unhelpfully twiddle their thumbs. The Union has not been silent on Ukraine. At the beginning of March, 141 countries in the 193-member General Assembly adopted a resolution demanding that Russia immediately end all military operations more than the required two-thirds majority. Only North Korea, Eritrea, Syria and Belarus, and Russia, voted against. So what happened? Nothing. Were penalties issued or enforcement action taken? No. Three weeks later, the Assembly overwhelmingly passed another resolution, insisting on aid agency access and civilian protection and criticizing Russia for creating a dire humanitarian situation. This must have been about the time that, as we now know, civilians in Bucha were being executed, raped and tortured by Russian troops. Once again, the UN vote was largely ignored by Moscow. The 15-member UN Security Council, the one body that really could make a difference, had already proven its impotence. In the days following the invasion, a resolution condemning the assault failed after Russia used its veto. China, India and the UAE abstained. Ukraine's furious ambassador memorably told the council, your words have less value than a hole in a New York pretzel. Not giving up, Zelensky called on Tuesday for council members to stop what he says is a genocide and expel Russia from the Security Council, which he said was paralyzed and ineffective. Kiev, he said, wants a transparent, international investigation. In fact, the UN Human Rights Council has already begun an inquiry. And later this week the US and Britain, which currently holds the Security Council presidency, will attempt to expel Russia from the UNHRC. We cannot let a member state that is subverting every principle we hold dear to continue to participate, said Linda Thomas-Greenfield, US Ambassador to the UN. Russia's participation in the Human Rights Council is a farce. Most objective observers would certainly agree. In truth, 
her words may be said to apply to Russia's presence in the UN as a whole. How can the rank behavior of a violently aggressive, out-of-control rogue regime possibly be tolerated indefinitely? And how can the UN be made more effective? These fundamental questions now hang over the UN's future. They apply, too, to other serially abusive states. But Russia is key, given its privileged post-1945 position. If the UN is to retain its authority as guardian of the international rules-based order, if it is to be able to act decisively when those rules are broken, and indeed, if it is to survive at all as anything more than a talking shop and stage for 